Hi, I'm Dr. Kamal Sharma, DM Cardiologist, Senior Interventional Cardiologist, Ahmedabad. In patients with heart failure, there is more than 50% chances that these patients also have sleep apnea. And in sleep apnea, there is a good chance that a prolonged sleep apnea itself can worsen or bring out a pre-existing heart failure. Hence, both are interlinked. In one of our own papers, which we published in Curious International Journal, 77 patients were analyzed with heart failure and we found out that more than 50% of them had AHI more than 5, which is the definition for sleep apnea, which means to say that there are a huge amount of patients of which one third were dilated cardiomyopathies who had functional breathlessness class between class 2 to 3, but their AHIs were between 5 to 15, which is uh, moderate to severe form of uh, uh, sleep apnea. So both are interlinked and it's often overlooked the distinction between you know patients being treated only for sleep apnea without evaluation for heart failure or heart failure not looked into uh, obstructive sleep apnea being coexistent is something that needs to be brought down to the community and to the physicians and to the pulmonologist and to the cardiologist. So sleep apnea is diagnosed based on of course clinical characteristics which include increased daytime somnolence, excessive snoring and there are certain clinical criteria which have been called as top bank criteria but these are very subjective criteria they cannot be used to stamp or confirm a case of sleep apnea uh, with or without heart failure for that you need a sleep study now in covid times doing a sleep study in a sleep lab has often become very uh, uh, debatable in the sense that the patients may not sometimes be willing and often the change of environment itself can disturb the sleep of the patient hence it's very important that Sleep studies should be encouraged to be done in a sleep conducive homely environments and there are multiple available facets to it. We can we have a small disposable devices that are available now in market which can do a, a sleep study at home and there are other same kind of sleep lab environment created uh, non-disposable devices also which can be utilized at home to do a sleep study. So basically to confirm or rule out sleep apnea uh, the currently a uh, sleep study or sleep deep analysis is important to confirm or rule out a heart failure or, or without heart failure associated sleep apnea. In patients with sleep apnea ranges from 10 to 15 percent but if you look at the heart failure patients having sleep apnea the incidence has been ranging in international literature from 20 percent to 60 percent like in our own study which was done in India uh, the prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea was close to 51 percent which means more than half the patients of heart failure have one, some amount of obstructive sleep apnea and these were the patients who did not have class 4 which is the extreme grade of breathlessness lot of it class 2 and 3 patients with ejection fraction in not so bad range actually had the highest incidence of obstructive sleep apnea which goes on to tell you that lot of this dyspnea in these borderline and not so severe cases of heart failure can actually be responsible uh, be con uh, attributed to obstructive sleep apnea per se so once obstructive sleep apnea is taken care of which can masquerade as a symptom of pnd or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea once that is taken care of a lot of these patients can start feeling much better symptomatically moreover presence of chain stroke breathing as we call it is also present in almost 40 percent of the patients with heart failure which again goes on to reflect how the increased circulation time may be responsible for worsening or existing or precipitation of uh, obstructive sleep apnea in patients with heart failure. So once obstructive sleep apnea is identified and treated adequately in patients with heart failure, it's very likely to improve not only the quality of life but probably also add longevity in these patients. Sleep apnea patients need to be managed firstly by identifying the etiology. The doctor itself can take care that the breathlessness is not because of heart failure but obstructive sleep apnea per se. So increasing the dose of diuretic and hence causing problems with the renal functions is actually a bad strategy. So firstly once you can diagnose a case that is the symptoms are primarily driven or are reflective of obstructive sleep apnea that needs to help in treating not only OSA by uh, multiple exercises uh, and CPAP or BiPAP therapies in such patients using titrations by uh, sleep study reports itself and that therapy actually tends to improve ejection fraction not only the ejection fraction in heart failure but also quality of life and more importantly it will prevent worsening of the side effects that may happen uh, because of the anti-heart failure therapy is being up titrated when they were unnecessary uh, in because the symptoms were not ascribed to heart failure but to the OSA. So uh, exercises, lifestyle modification, weight loss 
and very importantly in indicated cases where the suitability and titration is feasible doing CPAP or BiPAP for these OSA patients is the therapy in the long run that helps the patient not only to come out of OSA itself but also improve their symptoms which have probably been ascribed to heart failure and also helps in long term in improvement of ejection fraction in patients with heart failure.